All right, hello everybody and welcome to the after show, the last one of the this edition of the Magnus Carlsen Invitational. I'm happy to welcome Grandmaster uh, Sam Shanklin, uh, a very good educated and amazing player. Uh, happy to have you back, Sam. How's it going today? That's good. How are you? Doing all right. I have to admit, I am a little bit tired. I was doing, like I was telling you, I was doing the uh, French uh, commentary, streaming, producing the last couple of days after uh, some Paris internet problems, um, which you know brings back the comment from Hikaru when uh, when Ali Reza Faruja had internet problems in the, early in the tournament. He said, "Oh, it's just a French internet." So this gave some uh, credence to what Hikaru said, uh, which is not something that we want to do, but you know it happened. So. Um, so yes, yeah, so I was helping out. I'm a little smart guy. Yeah, yeah. There you go. He knows. He knows best. He knows all. Um, so, uh, what did you think of the final today? It was pretty exciting. Uh, tense match up to the last moment. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always happy to see these particular guys in the final. I mean, they're, they're the guys I certainly have the warmest relationship in among like the top ten. These top guys. I mean, Hikaru was my one of my biggest heroes growing up as you know this American grown player and. Uh, Obviously, having worked with Magnus in the past, and I owe a lot of my development to to him and his team and whatnot. I, it's always great to see these two guys, and they're such great fighters. I mean, uh, no one ever like I, I've never seen these guys make a quick draw like once, and it's unsurprising to me that in a four game match they produced three decisive ones. And well, there's some very good games. I thought. Yeah, I thought it was some some really interesting play, and they they um yeah they fought it out. I mean, not so much in the they weren't really theoretical debates, but they were really hard fought, uh, good games. Um, there were some theoretical debates up there. But. All right, well maybe maybe you uh, yeah well let's see let's let's look at it I guess. Um, this first game not so much. I mean, this line that that Magnus played is I don't know. I mean, it, it it's very comfortable for White, but I don't think you're really better. Um, it I mean. It's pretty good for Blitz and Rapid, I think, just because your moves are pretty easy, but I don't think you're really putting much pressure on Black in this particular line. Yeah, so I have a nice little graphic here showing Magnus Carlsen winning, winning the Magnus Carlsen Invitational. Obviously, a little, uh, little funny there. And uh, but we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to the games. And uh, yeah, we'll look at we'll look at them one by one. Uh, here we go. Hopefully, you guys still see us. Um, and let me know. Hopefully, the sound is good. You know, I've been uh, I've been trying to uh, I've been trying to fiddle around. I was having some issues in the French stream, but I think now I, I figured out that um, some programs in Windows can uh, change by themselves, sort of your your input volume, which is a uh, something new to me. I'm new to all this stuff. Um, so, all right, let's go. Let's go through the first I, game. I actually heard there was a glitch with Windows Sound that uh, they don't understand uh, Quebecois, which is not actually French. But you know. well, there you go. Maybe that. Maybe that's the uh, the answer I've been searching for, and and Google, you know, w which Google could not provide. So yeah, so I guess first interesting moment. A lot of people uh, have been playing this Bishop C five line. I think Fabiano and Grischuk and a lot of those guys, um, but. Hikaru has played knight b6. He had one successful Armageddon game against, what was it, Ding Li Ren, I think, um, that went with knight b6 in this tournament. So um, that seems to be his line of choice. So Magnus played d3, bishop e3, which is a very safe system for what? I mean, you can be much more ambitious and try to develop the bishop to b2 with a3 and b4, but uh, this, this line here is a much safer choice. And... Uh, I mean, I would be shocked if Magnus chose this particular variation in an Armageddon game, for example, but for game one, it, it's not a surprise at all. Yeah, so it, it looks like he was okay with having a solid uh, solid first game and try to uh, try to outplay Black later on. Yeah, I mean, this kind of thing is, I didn't know, I mean, it, it sort of looks like a reverse dragon where, you know, I guess whenever you play black in the dragon and you get a position like this one where white is castled short and you get your pieces out easily, you're never unhappy. But at the same time, it's really hard to claim that you're better here. I mean, black is very solid and has very natural play. Um, I like Hikari's decision to play bishop f6. Um, but, yeah. yeah, I guess a concrete movie he's preparing knight to d4. Or also e4. Or also e4, yeah, that's true. Um, so... I believe that the threat of e4 is why Magnus chose to play knight d2. Yeah. Um, yeah, and now it was interesting. I, I guess he didn't have to... I mean, it, I don't think it's bad what Hikaru did, but he 
it was not forced to go into this sort of end game structure. Um, yeah, it, was, it was symmetrical, and he was, I guess, Magnus was hoping that the good knight would eventually prevail. And it, I mean, ultimately, he was, it did, but I don't think this would work in a slower game. Um, but at the same time, Magnus generally doesn't go for lines like this in slower chess. Yeah, this this looked like um, this looked like something where you can kind of play forever with White, especially with the knight, you know, hopping around for a rapid game. It's it's pretty you know, hard. It's a bad bishop is the problem, and if it's yeah. actually on d four, like this bishop was on e six, I would say black is like better, but uh, but it's a bad bishop, and this is something that Hikari never really managed to solve. I was I was thinking he should be looking for some direct way to. To, to like force pawns off or start exchanging. I guess he couldn't have played b5 last move very comfortably for some reason or another. I don't know, but um, I was yeah b5 here. The I think the problem was king f3, and um, well, it's right. not that it's a huge problem, but the you know, well, and if you... b5 didn't achieve its desired goal, then I mean it's not going to force the pawns off the board. So. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, he played um. I thought the moves he made were 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 pretty good for a while here, um, but it was but yeah he he didn't really succeed in getting pawns off the board like you said. Um, yeah, there was I mean, one once White gets all these pawns on white squares, it's gonna be unpleasant uh, on the queen side. I mean this knight on c4 is not gonna leave. It blocks the c file. It controls all the key squares on the e file, and basically White's gonna choose when the position is gonna open up. And so Magnus, if you look, he's playing. He's clearly planning on invading, using the c-file to invade, but he's also not rushing it. He can play rook c2, king g2, king f1 is needed first, and then eventually he will move this knight away. But basically, the e-file, he's got everything under control. The only file that anyone can use is the c-file, and while the knight on c4 is blocking it now, because that knight is white, it's white's choice when this knight leaves, and black can't kick it in any way or force him to make a decision under unfavorable circumstances. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I can't imagine black is really much, much worse here, but uh, I think practically you take white. Yeah, it, it is uh, it is hard to believe, but it's... Uh... B6 is a very interesting decision to me. I yeah, know. you thought he could be maybe more patient and just keep waiting, kind of? Yeah, but it's possible that Magnus was just was worried. Like, I mean, rook e1, rook a1 with tempo, other rook to e1, and checkmate. Like, this is not joking around. That could come sooner rather than later. So I get why he felt the need to change course pretty quickly here. I mean, it's not like he's terrified of getting mid in the next, like, three moves, but it, it could happen. And yeah. b6 is opening the queen side fast enough that you could see why this won't. Is so effective. So yeah, here and then f four. Also, this is clearly a sign that he was worried about the rook invasion. Yeah, um, and here, I'm trying to think of what I I was obviously analyzing this as it was happening, uh, but things started to happen pretty fast. I got someone in the chat saying I have to look up where Sam is from. His pronunciation of Magnus is is unique. I'm from the Bay Area, California. Uh, my pronunciation of Magnus is. Uh, I'm trying to pronounce it the right way, like a Norwegian would, but I just can't, and I'm doing my best. So, uh, is, just typical California American accent. That's what is a uh, is Shanklin a Norwegian name? No, it's actually a Scottish name. Oh, I, I was kidding. I, I, well, I I definitely knew it was not Norwegian. I would have guessed. I might not have guessed correctly, but I would have guessed some sort of UK related country. So. All right, so uh, yeah, he goes bishop d8. There were some, maybe some other possibilities here, but it's uh, the game gets sort of simplified a little bit um, to this position where they only have they have very reduced material, but it's still kind of tricky for black. I thought this was still a tricky position to play. I actually remember losing an endgame like this years ago. Just one second, I got the door. Just a second. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, I, I remember myself losing an endgame like this. Uh, when I was a kid, like maybe I was 15 years old to a, to another grandmaster. And, uh, and I thought, I remember thinking like, you know, how stupid I was to, to have possibly lose, lost a, a position like this where it's so little material. But now that I'm a little older, I realize that it's, it's trickier, it's trickier than I, uh, than I realized when I was that young and that you always have to be careful in, in these positions. Yeah. And oh. So a couple of things. First of all, I just had to answer the door there, so sorry about that. But for those who bought my trustable course, you'll be happy to know what they delivered was materials for me to record more videos for it. So I'll do a video update for that once I have everything. But I think that was my high-end microphone. But so oh, cool. Good on that. 
but also basically a position like this one, it feels like this game went sort of in a way that both sides could be happy with. Like Black was under a little bit of pressure. I think he's clearly survived it to the point that he has reached a holdable position. But at the same time, White's also got a game that he can play forever where there are sets of exchanges that will leave Black in a very bad way. For example, I believe if the Rooks come off, this could be very dangerous for Black. Like, I mean, if you can imagine Rooks come off, like goes King F3, Knight E4, G4, goes makes a pass to H pawn. I mean, even then their material is reduced enough that I believe it's probably a draw, but you could easily see something going wrong for Black. And uh, so, I mean, White's clearly better at this point, but the material is so reduced that I think that Black's drawing chances are much higher than White's winning chances still. I, I think there's every reason for um, for Magnus to be satisfied here and keep pushing. And classical, I think there's no way he ever loses, but uh, Eric Hikari ever loses, but in Blitz, this is the rapid. This is very tough. Yeah, so now the game the name game goes on. I mean it's a it's a bit of a the knight keeps dancing around and creating creating threats and it's it's hard it's always hard to keep the the rook on the right square depending on where the knight is hopping. Like this position here, if the rooks were off here, like already knight f6 would be immediately resigned, I think. Yes. So the pawn end games, if we trade everything, like let's say I don't know how to do it, but let's say we trade everything and white can play g4, create a pass pawn on the h file, then they they almost for sure will be winning. Um, so, so yeah, so the pretty much, um, trades of minor pieces are not as bad, but any trade of rooks, uh, and then if it's followed by a trade of minor pieces after that is, is definitely bad. So I really uh, liked what Magnus said in the next two moves. So this rook on a3 is extremely annoying and he played knight d2 to kick it away. And it's not the knight on e4 was on a bad square, but now knight c4 is a very serious threat. If bishop e5, there is knight f1. So the rook has to go to e5 in order to go away. And then um, the knight goes back to e4. And so it's not like the knight was on a bad square per se. It's just he forced the rook away and then right went right back where he came from. So by playing knight g2, rook e5, knight e4, it's almost like in this position, instead of playing knight g2, uh, white picked up black's rook on e3, placed it on e5, and hit the clock yeah. and said, you're move again, and your rook is displayed. <laughs> I thought this was a very nice way. Yeah, this was, it was really nice because it also... I mean, it, it acknowledged that Black had an idea. Like, Black wants to play either, like, King f5, King g4, Bishop b5, Bishop g3. There's there's ideas. And this well, forces Black the Rook to a much... Yeah, I mean, if Black plays Bishop b5, you're completely stuck. You just have to start playing Rook yeah. and making a draw. Exactly. And so this found a really clever way, because like you said, if, if Bishop b5, Knight f1, the Rook is trapped, and this is really clever. And um, yeah. so... Yeah, so he manages to, to like you said, change, change the position of the rook and put it back on e5. And then already it got to be tricky. This is already yeah. trickier for, for, for... I think this was around the point where I woke up in the morning. And I believe around here I thought Magnus was going to win. Um, yeah. But this was the first time I would have thought so. There, up to here I would have thought that the position, while well, there are chances, it should be defensible. And uh, now while... Well, I think the defense has gotten hard enough that even for someone as strong as Hikari in a rapid game, I think it's going to be very, very hard to hang on. Yeah, I don't know if King G4, there's a there's clearly a point where things went uh, from, you know, being a difficult position to hold to just being bad. And I don't know if it was here or later, this Frank. Is okay. This is still okay, yeah. Yeah, he gets the D3 pawn now, or, or he tries to. Gets one of the pawns, but yeah. yeah, well, here, but here it got here. I think it got bad, um, and I don't know. It's difficult though, I mean, um, because I here, think... Magnus, I don't know if he calculated it or, or I mean, he, he probably calculated some of some of this, but it gets, you know, after Bishop H three, Rook H five. Apparently, here King G four was holding, is what I'm told, and that was the only way. King G four here. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. And so if we play knight f6, there's king f4, and I guess it's okay. Yeah, now their start checks are going to come. Actually, maybe king h3 is even fine. I didn't... Yeah, sure. Um, uh, but king, king f4 is probably better with rook g2 coming. Yeah, I mean, you have to be careful. Like, like, I mean, but you take one look at this. You see rook g5, oh my god, knight d5 is checkmate next move. Like, it's easy to get terrified, but I guess... Oh, yeah. Yeah, and 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 rook g five here we can take the pawn, which is uh, obviously a big a big winning for black, which is kind of nice. But even yeah. here, like you go see rook g five, king h four, and then rook g eight, and just look at that position and think. Yeah, like it's this is very very hard. 
No, yeah. And they were very short uh, on time. And king f4 is a natural move because he, you know, he still wants to play rook g2. And on knight takes g3, he's just okay. Um, yeah, but rook h8 didn't. This but rook h8 was, uh, was a real... Uh, a real good move. The problem is Black wants to play rook g2 check to make some room for his king to invade the position, but it's not going to work because after king f1, his rook gets hit, and then his bishop will be lost to rook f8. Yeah. This probably yeah. is what he's probably missed, but I mean... Yeah, it, yeah, it's... it's uh, it might sound simple, but in a position where every move is so difficult and you have no time, like, it, even for a guy as strong as him, missing something like this is not unusual. No, it's... it's uh Yeah, it's really... It's tough. Um... Uh, but so in a game, the, the the end is very nice. There's a very uh, nice trick um, at the end here to win, which was, you know, uh, not so easy to see in advance. But the only way to win is to play rook g8, king h7, knight f6. Sorry, was knight g5 not winning? Uh, oh, good. That's a good question. I thought this won. Maybe it does win, actually. I think it's almost certainly when it's rook yeah. g8 is coming next. Yeah, game. it's the same. It's the same. Uh, yeah, it's the same idea. You win the exchange, and yeah. then um, because Black's pawn is fixed on a black square, uh, he's lost. If a pawn were on the same color as his bishop, uh, it would be a draw. Or an opposite color as bishop, it would yeah. be a draw. And so, uh, yeah, I was wondering if he could have tried king e7, but I guess it's it's going to be a similar. Instead, no, like at this moment. Okay, rook f4, rook e4, and then king d5 comes and will easily transpose to a winning end. It's not even close. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I, I mean, I just thought it would be it would be sort of more because uh, if you play it this way, at least your king is closer, you know. So we okay, can get here. We have to be at least a little bit careful. Yeah, I mean, that was my idea. I'm sure. I'm sure it's losing. I just, you know, uh, obviously you're not gonna. You you probably have a better way to handle this than what I just did. Uh, king d6 is a good start. Yeah, king d6, king d6 is actually very strong because that forces. I guess I still have bishop f2 here or bishop g. Oh, bishop g1, rook g4. For example, here I can probably now play king d5, and then uh, when you come up with your king, I'll be able to play rook f4, and then your king will right. put up the back rank. And yeah, then... yeah, actually, rook it. I can't go here. Rook f7. And then king yeah. on the back rank, I put the king on e6, and then. I mean, what? Yeah, no, no, yeah. This is gonna, this one is going to be just winning. So, um, but yeah, so nice, uh, nice end game from Magnus. Not, not as easy. You know, I think some might have thought if you're, uh, some might have underestimated the difficulty of ho of trying to hold this for Black. Uh, also, like, I mean, you know, Magnus. I don't want to say he can't attack. He's mated people, but honestly, like this, this is the kind of game that makes him the best player of all time. Like this is like he manages to put so much more pressure in positions like that than anybody else. I mean, yeah, that is vintage Magnus, I guess. I mean, he so, does everything well, but this is the spot where I mean, I think he's head and shoulders above everybody else on the planet. Second game, Hikaru interestingly chose to play Bishop F4, which he's defended uh, a lot as Black in this tournament. So he obviously knows both sides of this very well. Yeah, and so I was very surprised Magnus went for this. I don't know. <laughs> The funniest thing, Mug Hikaru gets clobbered playing this line with Black repeatedly, and then Magnus is one of the guys doing the clobbering, winning two games pretty easily with White both times. He's like, "Oh yeah, let me go try playing the other side of this." I just don't get it. I mean, I was very surprised, and it was this. I don't think the opening necessarily decided this game, but it kind of did. I mean, it was. Uh, he had a tough. I've checked this stuff before, like, in classical you can sort of swing it, but in rapid it's just, I mean, like, objectively it's pretty close to equal if you, or maybe it even is equal if you know what you're doing with black, but practically, like, it's so much harder to play the black side. I mean, like, I played, the only time I got this line was with Zing there in, in um, World Team Championship, and, like, I was fine for almost the whole game until I finally, like, blundered at the end and he won, but it was, like, that whole time where I was fine, like, uh, he had, you know, like, his 10th best move leaves an equal position, and my second best move leaves an equal position. And, like, every time he doesn't have to do very much. And for me, like, the burden of playing the best move is very high. And it's a hard way to play chess like this. I mean, it's a, yeah, I, I hate, I hate all these lines for black. I gotta say, I just don't, I, I could never play this stuff. It's just so, so, uh, so painful to see. 
you know, with white, all the space, and there's not much that can uh, go wrong for white and so much that can go wrong for black. But of course, some extremely strong players, much, much stronger than myself, have defended, you know, these positions, Kramnik, yeah. Rajabov, but... Um, also for Magnus, like, for what it's worth, it just... I mean, it, this whole extremely nitty-gritty thing... I mean, Magnus might not feel that comfortable with giant messes, but I do think he does better in somewhat dynamic positions. Um, and he's outplayed Hikaru a lot over the years in messy games. I mean, it, among other things, like if you remember, I mean, he's played four World Championship match. Two of them, he was on bad form, and two of them, he was on good form. He, of the matches where he was on good form, he lost one game. It was in this line, and he got completely clobbered. And, like, mm -hmm. apart from that, he just played an amazing match. But I don't know. Yeah. So he's so much better than me. I shouldn't be criticizing his decisions. But this is a... a and this, you know, for, for those who are not so familiar with this line, it's pretty interesting. Like, White is happy to give up the A file and say, you got a file, but it doesn't really do much for you. And, um, and then my it's about... Yeah, I mean, my understanding of these positions is White wants to trade exactly one pair of rooks. Leave one pair of rooks on board and trade the other pair. Right. Because Black will take the only open file. Uh, if Black ever takes on C5 and White gets an open file too, Black's going to end up worse. But basically... I believe White's best plan is to do something like h4, eventually get knight e5 intake with the d-pawn, uh, and get your knight to d4, which would be very effective in helping push through with, like, sacrifices on e6 or get f5 through, or once Black has played h5, you can start playing g4. But a big part of that is if Black has doubled on the a-file, uh, he's going to have a fair amount of pressure. That's why you want to trade off exactly one pair of rooks. If you have one pair of rooks off, he can't really do much to you on the a-file. And if you have both pairs of rooks off, you don't have enough material to win the game. So I think white needs to be trading exactly one pair of rooks. Mm -hmm. if that makes so, any sense. Yeah, no, that makes that makes sense. So in a game, they uh, yeah, and Ma Magnus despise B takes C five. Yeah, I, I was going to mention that B takes C five is if you're if you're going to look for a culprit in this game, maybe this move is where things start to go a little bit you, wrong. You can't this move i mean you it's like a, you have no space like it's bad bishop well, potentially weakened king after h4 h5 the only asset that black has here is that he controls the only open file and yeah i mean I, he opens up a second one it just feels yeah i think he plays it he plays it, it it is a little bit hard to have over your hanging over your head that b5 could be playable at any point but yeah. you just gotta live i mean and sometimes it is a, a move in these game in lines but uh yeah it seems like here the uh I think he he may have misevaluated um, the the resulting position here, and I, there was one move that I thought Hikaru made that I was really impressed with, and maybe it's maybe this is an obvious move to Sam, but the move here on move twenty nine, Queen C three, I, I really liked that move a lot, um, and uh, the idea is simply to play Queen A three, where where but you need to get to the A file, you need to defend your knight, and it's just a perfect square for the queen. Um, and after that, the queen can come to a7. It's a, or... natural, it's a very natural and very intuitive move, but it's one that, at least for me, I'd probably take some time to find. While well, Hikaru, he's the kind of guy who finds this immediately. I mean, yeah. just, his, his feel is absolutely out of this world. That's what makes him the player he is. I mean, And now, I think this move, h5, might have been the other sort of imperceptible uh, mistake because yeah, later yeah. on... Yeah, and sometimes, you know, sometimes... If white plays h4, you'll kind of naturally play h5 back. But playing h5 without even having two yet, um, it's actually potentially a, a problem. And in a lot of the in a lot of the positions uh, that result, like the fact that the knight can come to g5 and take on f7 is a real problem. So I don't know if there was. It's not a h5 generally is played after white plays h4 because you don't want h5 to come from white. And the biggest reason for that is you don't want to get murdered on the h file. But with all the rooks gone, I don't think that's relevant anymore. Yeah, so I wonder if if he kept the pawn on h h seven if it would have changed something. But here, okay. um, queen a three, black doesn't have a lot of moves, so white's plan is to play queen a seven at some point. Uh, but I don't know, I don't know that there's a lot of moves. So he plays king g seven, knight e five. Now this this was actually really interesting. We were looking at this in the analysis room. Uh, what king have enough room here? Doesn't look like it. Well, it's 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 compl it gets really complicated. We actually um, well, bishop d4 is made after knight g5. Yeah, bishop d4 knight g5 is just bad. But there is there is the move queen e4, and it gets just really messy here. Um, yeah, white's king doesn't have quite enough room, but like 
yeah, like queen c6, and then I think we looked at uh, bishop d4. H4 might have been legal as well. Yeah, may, yeah, or h4 is possible, yeah. h4, I think we looked at takes. And then, um, takes and then queen takes f4, then let's say something like queen d6. Uh, okay, that's clever. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it was really messy, and I could see that he wanted something more concrete, but it was interesting. But he plays knight e5. Yeah, um, this, is, this is ugly. Yeah, and now the knight, the knight on d7 is just uh, is just a worse worse version. Uh, but Magnus found something uh, clever here, or at least it seemed to be clever, where he. Um, he put his queen on f5, but unfortunately, the knight endgame is probably there's not really a way around it. White is you know can play f3 somewhere soon. Um, well, but f3 if you play f3, the king doesn't get to f4 so fast. That's true. Uh, so maybe he should have just like made a waiting move then. Like I don't know if the show me huh? a waiting show me a waiting move. I'll try. So what if I do knight h7? This has to lose. Hang on. Well, I guess the question is, can we play the pawn end game, right? Like, I think you can. Yeah. Yeah, the pawn end game might just lose for whether we take this way or the other way. Yeah, because the the king on h seven is actually getting farther now. We can go. Yeah, just have to be careful. Always made g five with f four just to be safe in that. Yes, so that we don't get into one of these. Like, if black plays here, here, f four. If my king is on a six, could be very painful. So, but on g5, we can play f4, and the king will never get through. Yeah, which king gets there in time. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's not, not an easy position here for, for black. Uh, and this knight ending uh, was very, very difficult for, for black because um, because the c... I, I mean, per, it, yeah, it's probably just... It's, it's just losing, I think, I'm is really the... Hope. Yeah. Uh, eventually, the the knight is forced to defend the c6 pawn, and white has so basically white is playing. You know, the only way to defend it is from this square because he can't get to e7. Yeah, and if then you can't get to e7. That's completely yeah, right. and so then uh, the knight is extremely passive, and uh, white basically has a winning king and pawn ending. So yeah, I mean, you go f4 knight e5, and then basically here white has uh, after knight e5. What did he play? Knight b8. Knight f8. You okay. play knight f8 because, yeah, this is... P8. Basically, here, white has three winning moves. King b6, knight g6, and knight c6. Choose two that you can stop. Right. You can stop any two you want, but you can't stop all three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. No, this is just... Uh, so he, he decided to, to, to give a pawn, uh, but it doesn't... It's just... Uh, yeah. And now the two pawns are, are of course, uh, a lot faster than, than the... Well, then the, then the no pass pawn that <laughs> black, black has. So, uh, so yeah, really nice. Night... Yeah, I know. And, and sort of a, in part, uh, maybe a dubious opening choice, just not dubious in, in, uh, in uh, substance, but just dubious in style for, for what he wanted to get out of this game. Well, by uh, Agnes standards, I mean, this is better than playing h5 in the Rosalima. It is. It's more solid, but h5 at least is more uh, ambitious. Um, and actually he, he, you know, he claimed that he had analyzed H5 and he thinks it's still an interesting move and, and that he had a better position after, uh, 10 moves in that game. <laughs> that's, that's what he said. He might be, he might be trolling a little bit, but you know, or a lot bit or a lot of bit. Sure. Magnus is a born troll. Uh, yeah. If he, wasn't, I think... if he wasn't the best chess player in the world, I could see him like easily having his own like prank channel or something and being really, really good at it. But... Yeah, no, I, I, I know. Um, and but he did tell Jan Gustafsson that he has a file on it, which I thought was a joke. But you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? You, you, you decide. You be the judge. Um, people at home. So here he played. Uh, so they go into this bishop f4 line again. Uh, but this time with Mag Magnus having white, uh, so it's kind of funny. He, I mean, he played c5 twice, crushed Hikaru both times. Yeah. He tried playing the black side of this, had an absolutely miserable game and lost. He was like, oh, let's play something other than c5. Yeah, <laughs> so, so he plays I mean, bishop e2. Yeah, I didn't understand this because... Uh, I mean, this bishop e2 is not a bad move at all. Like, I think white still has every chance to fight for an edge, as Magnus clearly showed this game, but it's like... Yeah, well, this game was this game I thought was really impressive from from 
uh, from Magnus, and I don't know. I, I really don't. Which is unusual. You yeah. Play they play a six first. You said. A six, a four, and then c five. Yeah, and I wonder. Apparently, the 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 position. This seemed to be uh, a little bit of homework from from Magnus in this line with. Uh, yeah, and so maybe a6, a4, and I wonder if he was expecting c5 because he did play everything, or maybe he had just prepared it for, for whatever game. Um, he did play all of this very, very fast. Apparently there was one game like Andrejkin, Wojtacek Andrejkin um, with white playing knight g5 here. Um, and and the rest, like uh, this bishop takes e6, he played quickly, so clearly was some preparation. And I thought he played this game uh, incredibly well. I was really impressed. Uh, Four is very strong. My guess is, my guess is, without that move, white is worse. And with right. it, I think black is in trouble. I don't know if this is preparation or not. But knight e four is a very important move. Like if yeah. black gets b seven and stops you from doing that, like damn, your position is gonna suck. Yeah, basically, this takes the bishop pair away from black by force because he can play knight d six next if if that bishop moves. It also this also it fixes the pro it trades off a very bad knight. Like if black plays bishop b seven, that knight on c three might look nice, but it is blocking your c file that you need to make use of your rooks, your heavy pieces, and it has absolutely no good score to go to. Like you're trading off a very bad minor piece, essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there there were a lot of variations here, but um, but I thought Magnus played really well. Uh, yeah, he. That's this after e4, take one look at that bishop on b7, and you get very worried for black safety. Yeah. White is threatening or wants to come in with rook c7. Um, and none of black, the knights are not particularly well coordinated yet. I mean, they're, uh, they don't have good outposts anyway. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, Hikaru didn't do anything that was obviously wrong. I mean, it's hard to avoid getting into the kind of position that he gets. I think after knight e6, basically playing queen e7 and queen f8 had to have been wrong because of knight e4. I don't know what he could have done better, but that allowing knight e4 like that felt very wrong to me. Oh, yeah. Well, be. maybe. Yeah. So I, that would be all the way back here, you mean? Yeah. I think after knight e6, he had to do something other than this. I don't know where the queen should go. Maybe b6. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, which is why it's hard to, I don't think, like, all of this was preparation because there are so many ways for Black to kind of get their pieces out yeah. and capture on F8. So that's why I think uh, Magnus must have just thought that this was a, a decent uh, position for White and gone for it. So I don't know how much of it was prep, but it was... Uh, it made a pretty convincing case for it in the game. Yeah, very much so. Um, so Hikaru got a pawn to, to um, a pawn for his woes, so to speak, but it... But it uh, the position stayed really tough, and they get into this end game. And here, um, first of all, Bishop B4. That was the first sort of key move. And Grischuk, I think, said it's the something like the the move of the match or something like that, which seemed a little uh, a little uh, hyperbolic. Yeah. But was, uh, but I also think it's an extremely obvious move. I mean, yeah, I mean, he 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 retreats his bishop to a square where now it stops A5 forever, and so this pawn majority is rendered kind of useless um well, ineffective for the moment yeah ineffective yeah ineffective is right and um and then he goes on he proceeds and there, but there's a couple of other moves that i really really like uh in this ending so far there's been nothing interesting this is very straightforward but yeah geez. yeah the big move for me was um so of course uh, one of the big things is whether white will be able to play f4 easily or not um but in this position, actually, is a move. This move I really, really like, h4, which maybe, again, is to some people is obvious. Of course, it's not a complicated move. But this move is really strong because it fixes the pawn on h5, which becomes a real weakness. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, because I, I was tempted to look at ideas with h3 to take the g4 square away from the knight. Uh, but h4 is just... Uh, is just really I think strong. The biggest reason for this move being as strong as it is actually is that it clears g3 for the bishop. Right. That's another. That's another. Uh, uh, that's another the factor. That, essentially, here what White wants to do is get f4, f5 through, and if he can do that favorably, he's going to win without any discussion. But as soon as he plays f4, uh, he's going to have some issues with the g4 square, and uh, he will potentially lose the h2 pawn and whatnot if he plays h3 that's also not particularly pretty the pawn is a massive weakness so h4 is a good start and then what he's going to need to do is get this knight off of e5 before he plays f4 and i think the best way to do that is to transfer his bishop to g3 so i think the real reason that h4 is so strong is that it gets this bishop on b4 over to g3 
Right. That's another good reason. Um, yeah, and so here, bishop e1, like, you're, like you said, you know, transferring a bishop, also protecting this pawn, and uh, a dh pawn is weak too. And now, uh, Hikaru went for a tempting diversion that just turns out to be a, a, a bad move, but I think the position was already very, very difficult for him. I mean, uh, you get white too much to play bishop g3 and f4, and you have to resign. I mean, it's easy yeah, to Yeah, yeah. Even maybe B four first to stop A five if you want to, but yeah, no, it's it's a. Uh... But I mean, it's kind of hard to imagine. Like if 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 White gets a four through, like you're so dead that you have to try to do something. But it, I don't know what that would be. I mean, like A five. I mean, Hikaru, I guess, was trying to buy some time or something, but this doesn't work. There's a lot of problems. Like even even Rook C six, Bishop B seven, Rook B six, like improving the position of the Rook. There's just a lot of. A lot of issues for 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 black, uh, but after a five, rook d five is very strong and it, it attacks all of the pawns, uh, and now things just collapse. Rook takes h five was a nice move, uh, removing that pawn before switching to the other side, uh, and now black. This this wasn't the only way to play. Certainly rook g five, but it was good rook enough. G5, that's a cool as a cucumber move. Like I don't care. A b three. Do your worst. I mean. Yeah, I, I mean, I was, exp okay. I was expecting. Yeah, Rook, that looks much more natural to me. But, I mean, for example, here after A takes B3 and say Rook takes B3, or I don't know, maybe H5 was a problem, but like no, H5, we could have gone H5. Yeah, there H5, go. yeah. But Knight G2 check, it's not over. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. You're going to get two, two pawns and, uh, and Rook against Bishop and Knight and... This is going to be very real drawing chances here. Say knight g2 check, and we take this bishop yeah. and then go knight h4. This, I don't know. I mean, this is a very rare endgame. I don't think it's ever really been studied, but there's a very real chance because, I mean, for if you sure. get any kind of blockade or if we can sacrifice a piece for the two pawns, I don't know. My instinct is this has to be winning. I mean, the, given where the pawn stands, where they're already on white squares, can't be easily harassed. I believe this should win, but I'm not that confident in that assertion. And my guess yeah. is Mog felt the same, or maybe he just knew better. But yeah, uh, Rook G5, that's a, that is a cool move. I mean, it is a really cool as a cucumber move for sure. Yeah, very much. Uh, and... Starts with H5, threatening to take uh, on G6 with check. Now uh, Bishop C3. He, uh, not not falling for ninety six. Um, yeah, bishop c three, b four, bishop b two, and now the the now the uh, the pawns are well placed to move forward. Uh, yeah. And here, this was this allowed like the transposition into the opposite yeah. colored bishop ending, but it wasn't. Uh, it would not have changed the outcome. Very precise to the end. King g six, nice move. He wants to play h six and h seven. Uh, yeah. That forces the bishop back, f4. The, the, now, the no, this is not. This one is not close. On bishop d d3, we could play h6, bishop b4, f5, and yeah. this is not working because the bishop is on the right color. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, yeah, so the game is over here. King e7, and the plan is to just ram the pawn through. So, yeah, um, like really nice game. This this was maybe the, arguably this was Magnus's best game of the tournament, um, I think anyway. Uh, and so they go into the must win game for Ikaru in round four, and uh, Magnus chooses an opening that is part of your semi Slav repertoire, right? Yeah. Well, so he played a little differently than I was recommending, but it quickly ended up in something normal. So here after knight d two. I covered them of bishop before in the semi-slav repertoire, which I will uh, actually spam into the chat here uh, for people to buy. Sure. Yeah, so I gave, I gave bishop before, and for here the main move by far is queen c2. I believe the best move is actually rook c1, but after queen c2, d c4 uh, is what I was recommending. Bishop f6, knight f6, knight c4, uh, queen c7, and then here let's say a3. Uh, and bishop e7. This was an interesting position, and it's a much better version of what Hikaru got in the game, uh, which I think uh, was very, very comfortable for black, if not already a bit better. Here, this is, uh, there is some debate whether black's okay here or not. I believe he is, and I've provided some analysis to hopefully prove my point reasonably well. 
But the way Hikaru chose to play with A3, B4, my guess is he confused himself uh, and was aiming for this position where he's getting the extra tempo of Black having played Bishop B4 back to E7, which is not really ideal. After Knight D2, DC is Magnus played. Um, Bishop F6, Knight F6, Knight C4, Queen C7. I believe now the best move is G3, and uh, White gets some chances. Uh, it's not much. It, it's pretty thin, but I, I do think that White might be a little bit better here. Uh, but the way that Hikaru played, it looks like he hadn't realized that there, that Black's, or somehow he confused himself in the rapid time control and confused the lines as compared to, compared to the one with Bishop B4 and Queen C2 included, because the A3 plan here is just reaching the same um, the same kind of position, just like a tempo down from what I was looking at, and as a result, Black is extremely comfortable. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Um... Yeah, like here, for example... Um, like if you could, I mean, if you could imagine instead of bishop f3, white's queen were already on c2, and he's ready to play a move like rook fc1 or something, it's you could right. sort of see that he would have some pressure. And the plan that I came up with, which I thought was best, was similar to what Magnus did, was to go bishop a6, take this knight, and then play a5. Now Magnus went for c5 instead, which was probably necessary because white had taken with the queen instead of the bishop on c4. But um, yeah, I mean, here I think it's very obvious. Black is fine. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Um, Full credit to Magnus for after rook a c1, c5, dc. Of course, he didn't play bc5, but instead played. Yeah, because the, these positions, these, whoops, these positions, I guess, would be worse for black, right? I, typically. Yeah, well, I mean, this one is absolutely horrendous. I did see some positions like this where if black had already played knight d5, like let's say, like go, go ahead, play c5, dc, b5, bishop b7. Yeah. Uh, and like. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So Sorry, DC, I meant here, uh, BC, B5, Bishop B7. Okay, and let's say White just makes some stupid move like H3. Yeah. And we and we ignore that we can take an F3. If Black can yeah. take an D5 in these structures, keeping the bishops on the board and preparing for Bishop F6, it's interesting, And some, but uh, I think Black's probably more or less okay. It's hard for White to play A4 because of the weakness of the B4 square. You can harass the C3 knight with Bishop F6. You never really want to take on D5. Yeah. But given that under the present circumstances, if White wouldn't play H3 and would instead chop... Um, yeah. Chuck on b7, then knight a5 comes, and like here you're basically lost. I mean, this is yeah. this is bad news, but um, but Magnus of course took on c4, and it, it's just I mean, the, yeah, the no, I was no. actually very surprised to Kari managed to generate the kind of chances well, that he yeah. Had. I guess in this in this position, um, I was surprised Magnus. that he went for the pawn down position. You know, maybe it's okay for Black, but it just well, uh. Of his time and then played queen b8. I think he was looking for some kind of easy resolution and somehow had a blind spot about queen e5. Yeah, because it seemed like it seemed like even if he played like rook b8, the queen goes back. Even if he just waits, like even play rook c8, I don't know what White's big plan would have been here. Yeah, I mean, this, is, this should have been fine. I mean, queen b8 was it felt a little rushed, but I mean, for me, like if you just go back to instead, if you instead of rook b8, if you go queen e5. Yeah. Unless I'm missing something very direct, I think we're chopping everything off. I mean, I think Magnus, I'm sure Magnus saw this move and must have missed something. I don't know. Yeah. What it would have been. Um, like maybe he was worried about Bishop C6, for example. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. No. I mean, if Bishop C6, I think, unless I'm missing something, A6 wins the game. Um, right. But, uh, I mean, A6, yeah, Queen so A6, I'm Knight B8 is the idea. Um, I guess, I'm, I'm sure he saw Queen E5 and missed something. Uh, yeah. but you see, like, you give, like, one more move he's taking on b4, you're never worried about any tricks with, like, queen d7 or rook c8, they don't work, they don't even come close to working, and I just don't see what white is doing, this looks like... Yeah, it looks like it's going to equalize, yeah, so, um, yeah, queen b8 gives him a chance to play this position, uh... Yeah, I, mean, I do think this is very defensible for black, but, and I think Magnus defended it quite well, but, uh, you know, it, there are some chances for sure. Yeah, things things got a little. I thought things got pretty scary in this position. Uh, it's scary, but I do believe this is a draw. So I mean, it's definitely a draw without bishops and knights, and I right. believe that. And I believe that the bishop is better than the knight, so it's kind of hard to imagine. Um, but the knight is trickier than the bishop. Yeah, you could trick it, but I mean it's the same. <laughs> no, thing. I. Um, well, I, I, I guess one of the main, I'm pretty sure Ikaru thought he was winning with 95 and really? 
I think he must have thought that he was winning because otherwise you would never you would never play it. There's no there's no but reason to. I mean, I don't know, but to me, it felt like '95 was a very strange decision because the rook game is an obvious draw. But the problem is, like, what are you going to do instead? Like, you can't just push your pawn to the last rank. I mean, it was so it was so close here because he, um, like, Magnus played into King F7, and this this pawn is is not hanging because of Bishop H4, which I think yeah, is sort of you know fractured pawn structure is a problem. Yeah. Um, so that that becomes a problem, but somehow it's it's very close. To me, it looked very close to, to lost here. Uh, like, what are you going to do with this? I mean, 95 was a blunder, I'm sure of it. But and I know the computer said plus two, but it kept on repeating moves and not showing progress. Like what? No, yeah, I'm not. I'm. I actually don't have. I don't have the computer on now, and I didn't have it when I was streaming. But <laughs> I, I. So I haven't. I haven't actually. I don't know what the computer is saying. I haven't looked. It is so thoroughly dominated by that bishop. Like it can never leave that far without f2 becoming a point of crisis. Like you can't play a5 very easily without losing the pawn. I mean, h6 g5 is coming. It, this, I mean, yes, maybe course, is morally better, but I think this is a draw. I don't even think it's that difficult to draw. Maybe not. Um, I mean, I wonder if White could try to play, you know, at least start with like h4, maybe bring the king to g3 or something to, before. No. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean I'll tr it's... eventually I might be able to to take uh, take a pawn, <laughs> take a pawn somewhere. Um, if you if you can go like king g3 h4, force black to play h5, and then at some point go knight e5 when you have king f4, king g5 available, then I could sort of see this. And happen. at some point I might play, you know, a5, a6 also, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I mean, white's obviously much better with the pawn, but I do believe this is a draw, and I believe it's yeah. not that difficult to defend. Um, it, it's true that one of the big problems is that the knight is not stable, and that there's always sort of concrete chances of getting the bishop to I mean, e1 or something like that. that the problem that is the bishop is a better piece than the knight, and that if you yeah. trade the bishop for the knight, like, it's going to be a draw. So it's like, well, yeah, what so are you going to do? Like, continually play with the worst minor piece or reach a drawn rook end game? And I, I just don't, I don't see someone, it. Someone in the chat here is saying that this should be the plan. Grishchuk was saying that this should be the plan, which is okay, interesting. Go for b1. In the meantime, like, I'll just give you five moves in a row, and after king b1, play rook d2, and then take all of your pawns. I mean, this is not... Well, yeah, no, I, I, that's, I didn't even consider this plan, so yeah, I, that's interesting. I mean, I yeah, thought so, about it, but, like, I mean, literally, I just give you five moves in a row, and then play yeah. rook d2, and then laugh. So I let's mean, say we just, we just, you know, for kicks and giggles, I'm giving white all the moves. Yeah, um, I'm here after rook d2 now i think white has to be careful not to lose like i mean it's the the pawns are going to be falling although yeah i mean who knows because now you still can chop i think okay. on e5 I, I wouldn't chop here now the a pawn is actually dangerous but we'll go rook f2 and okay you, you can force a draw with the rook yeah f2. so i'm not yeah white's not going to lose but yeah i agree that it looks hard to King e8, let's say a5. I don't know, I mean, I don't know if Grishchuk wanted the king b1 specifically in the position with the knight on d3, but I don't know where else you would put yeah. this. Knight. King b1 involves abandoning the king side. The knight needs to be on a square that somehow holds it together. I, well, I don't is, think this was winning. This is still a little interesting. It's hard for the rook to come back, isn't but, it? Uh, can't I take enough of your pawns that I don't care and sacrifice my bishop? Maybe. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's possible. I don't know. Or maybe you might be able, to, yeah, because you can, t you you might I'll be able to. Bishop c five. I want to. I want to take your e three pawn. Let's say I take this one because I might Bishop as well take a pawn. Yeah, so you're going to take a lot of them. Is your point? Okay. Sure, rook f four. Yeah, and now the rook is coming, so I have to play a seven, I think. And then rook takes bishop yeah. takes a seven, and you're ne you're never. Winning, yeah, so. no, that that one is not winning. Rook f one, rook f two. Rook f two, yeah. So, all right. So this is interesting. So maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it is, you know, quite difficult. Um, and after 90, 95, though, was just now. Now I think black holds without any problems because in yeah, King now, D seven. Now you could wake Magnus up at three a.m. drunk out of his mind, and he would still hold this. I mean, with that, with the knight and bishop on the board, there's still a lot of precision that would be required. But at this point, there's just no way you're ever. Yeah, it's it's now it's just not. You can't win because once the. The black king gets incredibly active. If you ever try to go after the other pawns, then the, the black king is super, super active. So, Trying to uh, lose at this point. Yes, fair enough. Uh, losing. So what did uh, Hikaru play? He played king d7, king g2. Yeah, but no, I mean, with the fractured pawns like this. Or... No, yeah. And the pawns, uh, the, the black pawns are... Black is making more progress than white here, of course. Uh, 
Hikaru was just kind of trying to keep the game going, but uh, yeah, but good luck at this point. Yeah, now there's a uh, there's no uh, no chance at all if if you run uh, if you run that way. Uh, yeah, put your king on d3 and end up getting promoted upon. Okay. Yeah, like if you already if you go king e2, I think pawn takes h3 is already winning because now the the pawn is this pawn can't be stopped. Well, this one is stopped, so uh, so I think it's already losing. Is this uh, winning already? I don't know. Maybe, I think. Yeah. Rook I think this one. Seven, yeah, it's lost. Okay. You got to try a seven, I think, right? Because, because, yeah, rook. This one, this one is definitely lost because it's too fast. Yeah, but rook. But after a seven, I think you still lose. Even just rook a seven should be good enough. Yeah, and I guess you're saying that this is going to be lost. Yeah. And back on a two. Yeah. No, you're well, and then after like. Okay, now rook g two. Get the rook to g three, and then yeah. You're oh stuck. yeah, no, that's yeah, that's 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 a disaster. Yeah. yeah, so so of course Hikaru agreed to a draw here, uh, unfortunately for him. And Magnus uh, survive, survives and wins. For all the guys who are saying Naka missed the win in the endgame, that's because the computers, the Slockfish specifically, always misevaluates. It always believes White's winning when he plays Rook A8 and A7 in every single position, and it's always wrong. Uh, yeah, those, those Stockfish plus two, you always have to be careful because... The, the key thing is that if plus two just stays plus two as you make moves, then it's just a draw. It has to right, go from also, plus two to something also else. Specifically, all the, all the regular engines except for the AI ones have not yet, for whatever reason, they always believe that when you put the rook on the last rank and the pawn on the seven, that they always claim it's winning and it's not. So, like they, would think, so they would think like a pawn, like if you have rook a8, pawn on a7, pawn on h2, and king on h1, uh, versus like rook on a2, king on g7, that it's winning. For example, yeah, I mean, these end games are very, are very tough to evaluate. But like, for example, I had a game with a Kobe in a U.S. Championship, like 2015 or something, some horrible year for me. In the last, it was a last round game, and uh, and at some point the computer gave plus five in the Sun game, and it was a dead draw. And it's just they don't get it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's specifically the end game with like the one I had with a Kobe, and the the end game the computer was aiming for was I would have had e3 f4 g3 h4. And the pawn on a7, and he would have f5, g6, h5. So I even have an extra pawn. Uh, and he goes king g7 or whatever, and rook a1 against rook a8, a7, and this is a draw. Like, yeah, it's it's, plus five. it's interesting. And to, today was a was a real uh, fight, a real end game fight. Like we had games, uh, all the games had no queens for for most of the moves. I think so. Pretty pretty interesting that we got so many end games. Um, I guess before we end, I, I want to say a few things. First of all, um, first of all, thank you to our sponsors. Like we we had uh, for the after show, Millennium uh, was our sponsor. They um, have uh, really cool chess sets and other things that you can check out. Among other places in our Chess Twenty Four shop, um, this was a this was a long tournament, but it was really fun. I think for everybody watching, uh, it was a lot of work for for some of us. Uh, but if you do enjoy, you know, the, the, the content that we produce, I encourage you to go premium on Chess24 because that is basically the main way that we make uh, our money. And so even though we offer our content for free, if you are able to offer it, um, if you're able to afford it, you know, we really appreciate it. And you also then get access to a number of things like uh, video series from everybody from Magnus Carlsen to, to Jan Gustafsson and those guys. Um, you also get even, better. Even Preston if his internet is working. Even Preston if his internet is working, indeed. Uh, you also get to play the the players like Sam, uh, Sam, myself, and uh, Ali Reza, Magnus. When they play Banter Blitz, we only play it against premium members. Um, so there's a lot of good reasons. You also get better evaluations if you're following broadcasts. You can download PGN files after the games. All that sort of. There's a lot of of good stuff that comes with it. Um, so yeah, and, uh, I am soon going to go rest after a long tournament that was, that was, uh, amazing. Magnus somehow pulls it together, wins, you know, after a couple of, uh, difficult matches in the, the prelims, but you see that he, he, uh, he fights and doesn't like not winning any, any parting words from you, Sam, before we, uh, we end the show. No, I think this was great. I, I certainly enjoyed doing the broadcast with you. I certainly tried to bring the best uh, high quality objective and fair analysis I could. I tried to call it as I see it all the time. Um, but, uh, you know, just 
good stuff. I would just say to the government of France and Paris, you need to get your internet better for Monsieur Poissonnet. But other than that, uh, we're good to go. All right. Well, th thanks a lot, Sam, for joining us. A lot of days, uh, a lot of days during this event. Um, check out Sam's course too. The the on the semi slav. It's it's yeah, quite Magnus possible. Has been, Magnus has been copying it to some extent. It's been coming out in these games here. You know that these guys are for real. Uh, there so. were two. There were at least two like moments where it, it certainly seemed in this tournament that they were going through your course, which is already a lot. So yeah, two so events. If, so if it's good enough for these guys, which I mean, of course, we don't know for certain, but they were uh, playing a lot of the recommended lines. So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for you. You can buy it. I'll just spam the link at you guys one more time, and then there you uh, go. hopefully you'll knock my sales up, and I'll go, you know, buy my own private island in the French Polynesia or somewhere. I was hoping you'd say private island and not private jet, because those things are just silly. Um, no, but yeah. maybe I can buy Newfoundland. All right, Newfoundland. It's not for sale. A lot of natural resources. Uh, it's big. It's big too. You wouldn't know what to do with all that land. Exactly. Not. I wouldn't want. To. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to live there anyway. But, yeah. uh, you would also be the, the the butt of the joke because, you know, like in in Quebec, that's the main, you make fun of uh, people from Newfoundland is like the, there's an American equivalent, like, I don't know, like the, whatever people are used for jokes, like first, you know, kind of like a blonde or these sort of stereotypes. Of Valley course, girls? it's not. So, like we make fun whatever. of girls, that's what you're describing. We are... As you can see, we're all tired and now we're we're descending in the quality okay. of our content. So we'll we'll end it here. Thanks everybody for joining us. I look forward to the next event. We may have some fun fun announcements in the next few days. I'll I'll just leave it at that. And uh and yeah, we'll see you all very soon. All right. Take care.